when I'm eating one of these chewy taffies, my mouth becomes glued shut and I can't scream for help. Turns out all along this bear was wearing glasses. Fluttershy is scared of these fake spiders, even though she's clearly friends with real spiders as seen moments ago. This cold's teeth disappear for a moment. Granny Smith refuses to give up a few pieces of hay for food. Let Fluttershy and Angel starve, the holiday is more important. Her little routine may be set up for later on, but really all she's doing is frightening Fluttershy for no reason. This is how the castle always appears to fans. And you're here and not holed up in your cottage! Considering the festivities outside, it's actually the rest of the main six who are holed up. The balloons have never been inflated! Their silly versions of scary stories are just as, if not less exciting as the ones Fluttershy's later mocked for. But it's just like when I was afraid to sing in front of any pony. Nice callback, but it could be argued that episode ended with her deciding not all fears have to be conquered, which therefore doesn't apply here very well. Although it does foreshadow this episode's similar ending. Insert topical virus joke here. But seriously, the application of toilet paper in Equestria is both puzzling and disturbing. Hi, this pony! No. How does a headless pony costume work anyway? Vampire fruit bash! Ugh, definitely no. This joke sets up the fact Fluttershy does indeed wear the costume by the end, but why would Rarity make this costume with a black dress before Fluttershy decided to wear a simple black dress and only later make that part of the Flutterbat costume? It's a classic bootstrap paradox, but those usually involve time travel. Then again, Rarity is wearing a sea pony costume two years before the events of the movie, so maybe she is a time traveler. This one will look gorgeous on you. Period costumes are all the rage this year. Which is why I'm a fish. All those layers could slow me down, or worse, make me trip. If you're really so worried about tripping, Flutters, maybe you should reconsider your insanely long tail extensions. Just saying. With all the trauma surrounding Luna's past transgressions, you'd think the main six would have a little more sensitivity. I'd never have the chance to defend myself. How would I even hear to know I was under attack? My mouth becomes glued shut and I can't scream for help! Fluttershy's fears go well beyond cartoony exaggeration and into serious symptoms of a trauma victim. Better rename her to Flutter PTSD because Shy doesn't begin to describe what's going on here. Complete with each of your favorite candies! Except for Fluttershy, apparently. Every pony, look behind you! This occurs behind none of them. Uh, what are those? Fluttershy reveals her power level. You showed up to a party and every pony was extremely disappointed in you. Can you imagine anything more upsetting? Yes, you listed a bunch of highly upsetting scenarios back at Sugar Cube Corner. The color grading inside of Fluttershy's cottage is moody and cool. Then we cut to outside where it's brighter and warm. Then that warm color mistakenly follows us back inside. Lemon Hearts is so dedicated to her mouse cosplay that she chopped off her tail. Good thing Fluttershy isn't here, because she would never be able to handle this. Because she's way too politically correct to not be offended by wearing another race as a costume. Every pony reacts to Big Mac, even though he doesn't make a sound. Hey, try to keep up the illusion, would ya? But laughing at my brother for trying his best is fine. Animation error. Twilight appears twice in this shot. Either that or one of these is a costume, but they both look exactly like Twilight, so it's probably an error. These ghosts are not only glowing, but they also have voices. Neither of those things are explained at the end. They just happen to fall down here by chance, yet the majority of Fluttershy's scares depend on them doing so. Also, Fluttershy's haunted escapades expose the Apple family's secret bootlegging tunnel. Granny? Wait, Applejack! Don't run off without taking her scarf! This episode has great lighting throughout, but when you're a horrible nitpicker, you start to notice things like Rainbow Dash's lighting remaining even as she distances from Twilight's purple glow. Hearing Granny Smith nearby isn't some kind of proof this isn't her doing. In fact, isn't it kind of the opposite? As in, they should definitely still suspect these scares are part of her plan? <laughs> Check this out. There are two rarities in this shot. One standing back here, and the other is behind Pinkie Pie while Spike stands on her tail. Twilight can teleport them to safety at any moment, but instead she waits as long as possible to build dramatic tension. Then she only moves them a few feet away, as opposed to the surface. Moon has identical parallax as this tree, meaning it's not out in space, but rather it's tiny and floating just above them. Fluttershy? Don't act surprised it's Fluttershy, she is dressed up as herself after all. 
fuzzy legs made the sticky wall that made it difficult for you to see and move. That had nothing to do with seeing, though. Pinky's difficulty seeing was for other reasons. The fan-favorite concept of Flutterbat is once again teased, except this time it's merely a costume, and her lingering symptoms are sadly never fully explored. have any carrots? But that means I'll need to go out during the pandemic. 